I am glad to know that he entered his life as the man I remembered. Tell me something. Is Alistair always like that? Um, like what? Well, he answers every serious question with a jest. Is that normal? Thankfully, he has surprised me with his eagerness to learn the business of ruling. Despite his questionable humor, he may yet be a good king. <sighs> oh well, his heart is in the right place. In that, he reminds me of Caelan, which is no failing. Now I see Al Eamon gesturing to me. There is more work to be done. I must take my leave of you, I fear. Enjoy the rest of the celebration, Warden. I shall speak to you again before the day is done. Okay, let's talk to everyone we can, right? It is over. I can barely believe it. You stopped the civil war and then defeated the Blight. On behalf of Ferelden, allow me to say thank you. It truly cannot be said enough. Uh, you're welcome. No, oh, God, all the, I don't like any of these. Mm. It was a close call. We were incredibly lucky. Well, let's not tell the masses just yet. As far as they're concerned, you saved the day without breaking a sweat. Let them have that. It's too bad that you aren't remaining here in the capital. The hero of Ferelden would have influence, but I understand. Myself, I will be remaining here to help Alistair. Tegan will take over the rule of Redcliffe, at least for the time being. Connor seems well enough, and Isolde refuses to speak of what happened. She says she never wants to go back. I cannot thank you enough for saving them. They are the joy of my existence. Tell me, have you noticed anything strange about the lad? He seems quiet. Hmm... That, uh... Consider what he's been through, I guess. Ah, you are no doubt correct. It is my imagination, I am sure. But here I am, rambling on. I shall let you get back to your celebration, Warden. Enjoy it while you can. A soul, you better be happy, because I didn't tell him. It is so wonderful to see you again, healthy and whole. I shall. You made it. This is your day, Delan, and I could not bear the thought of not seeing you on it. It is only too bad the rest of the clan could not join me here. They send their well wishes with me. The Keeper was especially proud of the word of your victory. She said she cannot wait to tell the other clans. And this thing you have done, land to settle on, I... I cannot express what this means to the clans. Imagine the look on the Keeper's face when she learns of this. Will you come with me to tell her? Hmm. Gladly, though I must return. Wonderful. You will see the joy this will bring. It will be a day to remember for a very long time. I... I could build a, a house. On land that is my own. Forever. Is that not the strangest thought? But I should not take up so much of your time. Go, Dalen. Celebrate your victory and be merry. The gods smile on you truly. I'm actually very excited to be able to give, you know, the Dalish some land. So here we are. The conquering hero has won the day, and now he takes his bow and exits the stage. A fine ending. Hmm. You should be taking a bow with me. And my part was small. I'm happy to watch you receive the accolades. It's quite fun. You know, I can't help now but think of my vision. The Maker sent me to help you. And look what you did. It's a miracle. It truly is. I've been asked by the Chantry to return to the Urn of Sacred Ashes. I need to make sure it's protected. Maybe pilgrims can even begin going there again. Um, are you sure that's a good idea? Of course I do. I can't think of anything more important. I can give something back to the entire world. It will be a grand adventure of my very own. I'm looking forward to it. 
At any rate, you should get back to the celebration. We can speak another time. Hello, Wynn. The hero of Ferelden. My, my. How does it feel? Um... It's a little strange. Of that I have no doubt. It's a title you'll be wearing for a long time to come, just as Loghain wore his. But it's not so bad, is it? A blight defeated with the other nations barely becoming aware. Who could ask for better? Um... I didn't do it on my own. I don't think many heroes ever do. I'm glad not to be on the receiving end of all this attention myself. I say, let the young have their fame. Not that I've gone without notice. Irving asked me to take over as first enchanter. But I don't wish to go back. Not after all this. Instead, I've decided to accept a position here at court. There's not been a mage advising the throne for a very long time. Alistair ask you to stay? He's a good lad, and his heart is in the right place. He wants to see the lot of mages improved, and I am willing to help him. I understand you will be leaving. I wish you good fortune on your journeys, wherever they may take you. If we do not see each other again, live well, Warden. And thank you. Now that is actually a pretty huge deal, because, uh... You know how Alistair views mages. And him taking such a position is, uh, pretty amazing, really. I'm glad to see that. Humans have a better taste for spirits than I thought. The, the ale up here is actually good. Orsamar ale tastes like dirt in comparison. Probably because they put dirt in it. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> uh, does that mean you're staying here? Yeah, for now. They may have already branded me a surfacer back home anyhow. I got offered a spot in the human army. <laughs> and not as a mascot either. You know, these humans aren't bad for all their long legs. Hmm. Uh, General Ogren? Not bad. Yeah, makes me wish Bronca was still around so she could see what she's missing. <laughs> yeah, stupid girl. Ah, uh, well, enough babbling. That pot-bellied son of a whore Tegan said I'd pass out before drinking an entire barrel of pickle juice. I aim to prove him wrong. <laughs> oh boy. Don't ever change. <laughs> Who, me? It's been good traveling with you, Warden. Don't get lost in the shuffle now. Love, Ogren. They call you Hero. I have not heard it used before, but I think I understand the intent. The Arishak, on occasion, has declared a Kunari to be Kunoran Vel, one who serves as an example to others. Such examples are always made after their death, however, a death in service to the Kun. A living Kunoran Vel would be too proud. I'm not sure it's the same thing, no. Not for the Kunoran Vel. For the Kunari people, it is a cause for much celebration. It is one of few occasions when the Kunari are permitted to engage in revelry. There is imbibing of spirits, public chanting, meditations abandoned. It is madness. Hmm. Yeah, this isn't madness. Everyone is just very relieved. Hmm. Yes. Were I too weak to protect myself, I suppose I would also be vastly relieved to have a Hero, save the day. I suppose I should tell you. I have decided to return to my people. Your quest is done, and thus so is my reason for accompanying you. Yep. Um. That, that will be a long trip home, though, yeah. Yes. I suspect Parvolin will not look the same as it once did. My views have changed a little. It must be said. You gave me the chance to redeem my honor, and now it is done. I owe you a debt. And I will collect on that one day. Should I be in a position to repay, I will. Whatever is asked. Perhaps I shall see you again one day. Until then, may you always find the path you seek. Farewell, Kadan. I'm not sure what Kadan means, but uh, okay. 
Are you ready, my lord? The crowds outside are getting restless. Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. Right. I'll take you there now. Follow me. In the months that followed their wedding, Alistair and Anora proved themselves a surprisingly effective pair. Alistair spent a great deal of time at court, showing willingness to learn the art of governing from Anora and often deferring to her judgement. And no one was more surprised by this than Anora herself. The two of them made numerous outings into Denerim and, and the other settlements in Ferelden, supervising the reconstruction process and greeting their subjects personally, much to the commoners' enthusiastic approval. Many said that the chaos of the civil war and landsmeet were worth it for delivering such, such beloved monarchs. Rumors that the urn of sacred ashes had been found, and that it was used to heal Arl Eamon of his poisoning, circulated in Ferelden in the months following the Darkspawn defeat. Slowly, at first, and then with growing frequency as the Grand Cleric failed to, not to deny them. Once the Chantry made several attempts to verify the rumors, however, there, there came an official decree that no resting place for the ashes had been found. If the Urn of Sacred Ashes was in those ruins once, it was no longer. So, um... That is Leliana's doing? Really? I think? That, that's what I'm assuming, at least. Back to our old self. <laughs> Uh, following months of effort, the Tower of the Circle of Magi was finally cleansed of the last spirits to slip through the veil. No further abominations were created, and First Enchanter Irving was pleased to declare the circle safe. All that could be saved had been. With the slaver shut down in the alienage, the lot of the city-born elves uh, improved, improved for a time. The new king even named the local elder to his personal court. A scandal amongst the humans, but a sign of new hope to the elves. Shani continued to be an outspoken member of the Alien Age community, and in time became the new elder. That, out that outspokenness earned her frequent trouble, but served her people well. Arl Eamon returned to Redcliffe, beginning the long task of rebuilding. He found the village already bustling and eager to leave behind the memories of those terrible nights facing the undead. Connor was sent off to study at the Circle, and considering his earlier experiences, he excelled in his training and easily passed the harrowing to become a full mage. At his father's urging, Connor had accepted a position in Tevinter to undertake formal study of the Fade. The tavern in Redcliffe Village, now run by Bella, was renamed the Grey Warden's Rest. It echoes with tales of how the hero of Ferelden saved the village and healed Ar Arl Eamon with the sacred ashes of Andraste. Few believe that such tall tales could possibly be true. The Dalish elves prospered after the siege of Denerim, having earned much respect for their part in the battle. For once, human lands welcomed the wandering folk. The new keeper, Lanaya, was respected both amongst the Dalish as well as in the Ferelden court. She was a voice of reason, and other Dalish clans would turn would turn to her to help resolve disputes with human folk. In time, many of the Dalish clans moved to the new land that provided for, for them in the south near Ostagar. Wary of their human neighbors, however, tension soon rose again, and only keeper Lanaya Keeper Lanaya's leadership kept peace alive. In Orzammar, King Harrowmod quickly put down Balon's rebellion and then passed a series of laws to please the clan lords. Unfortunately, that isolated the dwarves even further from the surface. Caste restrictions and the right of the nobles both grew, and trade with the human lands was all but cut off. After a law excluding the castles from common areas of the city was passed, a rebellion saw the slums reduced practically to rubble. Although outrage was widespread, the assembly remained united behind King Harrowmont. Brother Burkle's new chantry in Orsamar drew a surprising number of converts among the dwarfs. They quickly attracted a great deal of anger from more conservative quarters, 
and before long the assembly severely restricted 